let's not forget, she's the one that gave us the idea for that ocean top town called Bluthton. Oh, big deal. I had that same basic idea years ago. I thought you'd be happy, and I should have known better. The idea of withdrawing from society is not a new one. It's happened time and again throughout history. People have decided, you know what, I, I, I'm not down with what's going on right now. I'm going to go off and start my own society. I'm going to start my own town, my own village, my own commune. Well, it's happening once again in the wake of President Barack Obama's re-election in the United States. Some of it driven by that, others just saying, I've had enough. Chris Sims has been documenting some of this for us, and she'll have a piece out in tomorrow's uh, Sun Media paper. She joins us now from her own bunker and commune in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. Chris, good to see you again. Thanks very much, Brian. It's a bunker of one family. I'll be very clear. <laughs> okay, a bunker of one family. Look, um, yeah. <laughs> you, you've documented several of these, and I want to start with the one that's called the Citadel, because this one is both fascinating uh, and strange, uh, also has a bit of controversy attached to it. Tell us about that. Absolutely, Brian. Well, the Washington Times unfortunately stole the best lead. They said uh, communes, they aren't just for hippies anymore. It's all because, like you said, because Barack Obama was reelected and now he's trying to f enforce some more strict gun control. So as a result, we've got some Tea Party types, I would call them, who are trying to dig into the mountains of Idaho. This is a picture of the map of Three Citadel. Looks like a Pretty awesome uh, campaign setting for D&D, actually. But anyway, uh, they're trying to build an armed uh, a fortress city in Idaho, and they're serious about it. They've got a big website about it with a bunch of frequently asked questions. They're asking families, like-minded, prepper-type prepper -type families, survivalist-mind families who love liberty and who are true patriots to apply to live at this place that hasn't been built yet. And what's interesting about this one, Brian, is that its main source of economy would actually be uh, firearms manufacturing. They would manufacture an AR-15 and a special kind of revolver that uh, three arms company already makes. And they, that would be their main source of income. See, and on their website... This, this is why I have trouble uh, taking this one seriously. I mean, this is just bizarre. You've got that, that map that we just showed, uh, and it includes walls around the city. So it'd be a walled city, a fortified city. Uh, but it would also welcome tourists to come and see the gun factory. Come and That's see us right. at the gun factory and where we live. <laughs> that part makes me go, this is a little strange, okay? Here's a, uh, a quick uh, quote from the guys. Uh, they say, it's primarily designed to defend against a grid-down economic collapse scenario, an affordable, safe, patriotic community where your children will be educated in school rather than in indoctrinated. You know, certain parts of that, it's like, hey, Sounds good. Other parts, eh, I don't know, including the fact that there is apparently, according to some people, some survivalists, a felon involved? That's what some people are alleging. And the reason why that came up is that the name of James Wesley Rawls is mentioned on that three Citadel site to come in there and live there as if it were kind of his idea. But James Wesley Rawls is a powerhouse in the survivalist community. His survival blog has been up basically since the Internet started. Very well respected author. And I contacted him and said, hey, could you comment on three Citadel? And he said, actually, no, I don't have anything to do with that project. I don't know why they're tagging my name to the website. And he alleges that some of the people who are involved with it have questionable backgrounds, including crime. But we don't know that for sure. So it, it's tough to say. What's, what, what really raised uh, the interest of some experts I spoke with, Brian, is that this notion of, of trying to bug out. I mean, it's, you know, we, we've got sympathies that way, too. But what they're planning out doing is moving to the middle of nowhere in Idaho with only this form of revenue. And so the question was, where are you going to get your power? You know, where are you going to get your economy? Are you going to have to be making your own clothes in the middle yeah. of the state? Well, yeah. let, let, let's, take that, a, let's take a quick look at another one, because I, I don't think sure. that one's going to go and we'll run out of time. Uh, okay. Our friend, Glenn Beck. Let's play a clip from what Glenn had to say. Independence, USA. It is an entire city. Let me show you. This is the main entrance. This is based on Ellis Island. Give me your tired, your weak, your huddled masses yearning to be free. She's beckoning those people. You, they call you worthless everywhere else. Come here. Come here and show the world what you can do. That was the gold of America. 
All right. So um, if you've seen that whole segment that, that Glenn talked about a couple of weeks ago for his his city or town, Independence USA, he says this is a long way off. And even he says, eh, this makes me sound a little crazy. But it does <laughs> seem more feasible, more doable than what they're talking about in Idaho. What, what's his plan? It is more doable uh, based on some of the people I've been speaking with. Okay, his plan is to scrape together, I think it's a measly $2 billion with a B from himself and from his supporters and fans and, and build this Independence Park. He based it off of Walt Disney's theme parks. But what he wants it to be for is for, you know, product, productive industrialists, for thinkers, for students, for people who want to simply raise their children in kind of an unschooling environment. They call it Going Galt, which is, of course, a reference back to Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged and Galt's Gulch. That's where all the producers of the world said, you know what? I'm sick of this socialistic stuff. I'm sick of being taxed to death. I'm heading out of here. I'm dropping into society. So he's taking that and kind of turning it on its head. He's saying, I'm not going to be a secret in some valley somewhere. I want to be a beacon for productivity. And while it sounds a little bit wacky, because he's making it open and because he's including a modern economy with it, uh, the, the spokesperson I was speaking with, Jason Sorens, he's the founder of the Free State Movement. He's now a political science professor in Buffalo. He says this could actually work. Number one, because he's got the money to start it. And number two, because it's still based on a free flow of ideas and they're not trying to tan their own hides out in the wilderness. He's actually making it open to an actual economy. And he said Pat Robertson managed to do this with his Christian television networks. The idea that you could start a television station, build a school around, build a school around that, build a community around that, and it will still continue on into the future. So very neat idea from Beck. All right, and I just want to point out, uh, and you'll have some of this in, in your pa feature in the papers tomorrow, is that this has been done before, and it's been done successfully. Here's some failed and successful utopias. Brook Farm in Massachusetts. Um, there was Oneida. Oneida in New York. They make your flatware. Started out as a religious community. Ave Maria in Florida. There, there's an Ida. Yeah, those guys started out as a religious community that wanted to live separately. Ave Maria in Florida started in 2005. It's actually a going concern with the university in housing. So these things do take off. Sometimes they, uh, they fail. Sometimes they go. And by the way, one in uh, Canada that I found, Chris, not far from uh, yeah. your old stomping grounds, Chilliwack, B.C. <laughs> So That's an perfect. eco village in Chilliwack. Chris, uh, best of luck. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Brian.